Ah, ça. Does it say Escher Cloud? It's my CCC. Excuse me? Oh, it's just, uh, I'm not sure why it says Escher Cloud. It's my CC. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't very, know. <laughs> the company does not exist anymore. I don't know. I will fix it. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Sal, your name uh, was were raised in the certifier meeting um, an hour ago, and we wondered if you have a copy of the diagram that um, the layer cake diagram that uh, um, Lily presented um, the other day. Um, yeah, I might be able to find. It. Um, okay. So the, the, she was putting together a, um, a layer cake to show the relationship between all the CCC projects. And um, I wanted to uh, get some eyes on, on how we can refactor it so that new new categories of things um, have, a, have a clearer sort of relation to the things that are, well, just basically wanted to sort of think about whether it's got the right layers and partitions. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, we've also been doing a little bit of work on uh, how to reorganize just the open source projects so they're so, so it's easier to understand. But yeah, I will get that. Uh, which meeting did this come out of? This was um, the monthly certifier framework. Yeah, okay, so I need to bring it back to that. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Okay, so it's four minutes past the hour. Um, I know a few people on the call today, but I believe we can still proceed. Um, there is no reason for us to not to. Hi, Nicholas. Um, and I would like to today uh, to go through uh, the confidential payload governance. I'd like to finally nail it so we can uh, submit it to the broad attack for review and to um, <clears throat> and to move on. Um, it's been long enough. Uh, welcome back from RSA, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and put the link in the chat, like I always do. All right, that's the link, and this is my screen. Uh, now, now is a good time to tell me if uh, I need to zoom in. Maybe just uh, one more. I'm sharing a giant screen. So. Wait, did I not? I am. I'm sharing the screen. Which uh, which screen are you seeing, by the way? I want to make sure. Yeah. Huh? You can see the payload governance. Yeah. You can see it. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I have like three screens here. All right. So, Chris, your uh, comment on unmanageable, uh, unmanageably high TCB um, is uh, taken. I, I think I agree with it. Let's just go over it to make sure uh, the wording is good. Yeah, I, I decided that, um, you know, my comment was basically, let's add this bullet, and I didn't think of a better way of phrasing it. So Yeah, I know. I like it. I like it. I don't have any... Um... No, uh, any additional suggestions here? Okay, so unless I see uh, objections, I will accept this into the main text. Um, now, I let me see what what other comments. Um, this one, we need to defer. Is there a glossary? Because we could uh, simply uh, add, uh, Sal, we could probably add a link to uh, a glossary. Yeah, so we have the CCC glossary, and I think that's unblocked now. So if we want to add any definitions to it, um, I'll link that back in here as well. Okay. Uh, so Sal, can I ask you to uh, then uh, add um, once you do that, simply resolve this comment. Okay. 
Let's see, you know where the glossary is. Um, I don't know, so this one, I do not know if these are going to be control objectives or control specifics, but we need to, um, yeah. So what I'm referring to here are, um, I would actually, I, I, I would probably say these are control procedures because this is too, um, uh, too, too specific. Um, hold on, let me edit this comment. Let, let, so, so let me explain. Um, so control objective might be protect data in use. It's a very, very generic control objective. So and it may scope it and say, you know, protect data in use for uh, for highly classified data, that, that sort of thing. And control procedure goes into the details of what actually needs to happen um, in this case, right? And uh, that's where I am. Uh, basically uh, replacing control objectives with control procedures. And where I say, uh, should we make it explicit? I would say yes. And this goes onto the personas uh, section. So what are the expectations? What is everyone supposed to deliver, right? And this is in uh, reference, if you remember, to this document that we have that we also need to put up in front of the uh, tag. I think this one is actually more ready. I don't know why it's not showing. Okay, there we go. But remember this, <clears throat> this who, who is responsible to deliver what to whom? And we can um, uh, you know, make it a little bit more explicit inside this document. So, um, you know, I would probably at this point in time say yes. Um, and except what I would do is... Um, Uh, should I reference here that the persona section? I don't know, uh, but perhaps not. So I'll, I'll just resolve this comment. Uh, maybe with a comment. Let's look at the persona section. Okay. So closing that. Uh, then I have a comment that says, what is the difference? What am I referring to here? What is this for? Like I'm trying to understand. Oh, tempering on unauthorized modification. Hold on. Oh, this one's already resolved, right, Chris? Because you added a new language under forces and solutions. Um, so that's good. Okay, so tempering unauthorized modifications, what's the difference? Should we not uh, just have uh, like one or the other? Well, I think it's a difference. What is the difference? Well, I, I, for me, the, 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 the difference is, um, Basically, unauthorized modifications be, are before tempering, right? If you have reproducible bills and you trigger a change which you are not allowed to to merge because you didn't do like a appropriate um, merge control, you have an unauthorized modification. For me, tempering, but that might be lost in translation, is after something was built and you upload it on a web page or in an artifactory. And then somebody goes to that resulting artifactory and tempering of it. So for me, these are two two things. I guess I asked the question because I think um, uh, te tempering definition, uh, yeah, like dictionary definition, is unauthorized modification. So it seems uh, like we're saying the same thing twice. Okay, then this is yeah. For me, so, it's, it's uh, it, yeah. As I said, okay. it might be lost in translation. I'm fine. You're the native speaker, Which but I, I just thought for me, <laughs> well, this is I'm the difference. I'm not a native speaker between. either. <laughs> My accent doesn't make that clear. But um, I, okay, Na native speakers, speak up. <laughs> I honestly think no, I'm not native, but just to make a point, right? I think if we have both of them, 
we can later in the mitigations attempt both, right? Tempering or unauthorized. The mitigation for unauthorized is is, is go governments well built. Tempering is about as that doing doing chars, doing signatures, preventing access to the data. And that's that's why I think it would be good to have both of them being outlined, even though that the result at the end is the same. But with that I shut up now. Okay. So native speakers, tell us what you think. Sounds fine to me. I'm not, I can't claim to be a native speaker either, but I'm, I've been speaking English since I was five. So maybe that's as close as we're going to get in this. Uh, so what's, what, what's your take? I, I think it sounds fine. I think it, it's very clear and concise. So keep, keep both. Yep. Any other opinions? Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm thinking it's redundant. It's not really an English usage thing. That tampering and unauthorized replications are, to me, the same. So I yeah. would pick one. I, in other words, I would pick one or the other. Uh, or 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 un unauthorized modifications might be better because. Um, it could be error or deliberate, whereas tampering sounds okay. deliberate. Uh, let's, this is how I, I would adjudicate it. I would basically say if somebody read an authorized modification, I don't think they'd be tempted to say, we should also add tempering to that list because the uh, unauthorized modifications yeah. isn't all encompassing enough. I don't think that's likely to happen. Yeah. But if you read it as stated, at least some people like myself might say, you know, why are you saying it twice? I, I think Chris brings up a cool point, which is um, it could be unintended authorized modifications. Uh, uh, maybe you want to add a second word there for that. Tampering and unauthorized modifications might be the same thing, but it could be unintended. How about then uh, or, or unintended I like that. or unauthorized? Tampering or unintended modifications. I like that phrase that um, was proposed. Unintended. How is that? I like it. Okay, because tempering tempering is authorized. Like tempering is intentional. It's intentional, but it's not necessarily author. It's like malicious yeah, 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 as opposed yeah. to incompetence or you know okay. human error. So I think that's better. So we'll resolve it. I'll, I'll I'll keep that. That's great. All right. Um, here is another one. Uh, so. We already have secure and isolated build practices here. And this bullet says, as part of secure and authorized build practice, in which case, shouldn't we just uh, move this under the first bullet? Because if we're saying, as part of this, we should also be doing that, right? So like read the first bullet and see if maybe the text from the third bullet can be moved into it. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, the first bullet talks about isolation and the third one is more about. Well, how about we just signing. remove the sentence? I guess code signing is not necessarily secure build practice. Secure build practice more is like, make sure that you're, you know, nobody messes up with, with your, your server that does compilation. And that's that's a secure isolated build practice, or perhaps you know execute like run your compile inside the trust execution environment, so nobody go messes with it. That would be more of the secure isolated build practice. But then code signing is separate from that. In yeah. that, you should also generate like sign your output. I totally agree, because we you can sign code that wasn't securely built. Right. So if I were to remove that, that would help us just avoid the confusion. So if I were to do that, I, I, I personally think it's in addition, it's more that as it is, was stated at the first bullet with integrity check, right? If you sign it and not check it in the down the pipe, you didn't win anything. So I think besides <clears throat> should sign it, it's also, as mentioned before, you should check for signatures and ensure that these are the signatures you expect, right? Yeah. So I say signed and checked. 
Yeah, I think that's more from a secure code build. It's if you have an artifact which you got from another pipeline, you assume they should have signed it and you must check it if you see a signature, right? Right. I think um, that's, point, right? that's the right. That's 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 part of the dependency. But so what would what would you do? Part of the dependency, give me. Part of yeah, but but the dependency doesn't mention mention a signature. That was why I was hitting on that. That's just that you should continuously monitor for vulnerabilities. But it's not about that. If you have a dependency and it provides a signature, you must check it before applying it. Maybe we, so we you avoid the third bullet, right? If, there is well, the third bullet is we the, okay. There's, there are a couple of differences there. So the third bullet speaks to if we generate some uh, artifact out of the uh, build process and we should sign that artifact. And that could be the final artifact. That's the code that gets generated. And in that case, you know, it might, you, you, of course, you'll use it. Uh, you know, you'll check the signatures part of attestation, but you also may want to check the signatures, uh, uh, you know, on, on the, uh, you know, device that will be, uh, you know, starting a package. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the second one, dependency management, has to do with, I got this dependency, I got this library, I got this package, and I want to make sure that it's signed uh, to know that I, it's it's from the right place. But that's that's not the same usage of, of, of signatures as with final compiled artifacts. Uh, okay, I agree. But I don't read in the first bullet that what you just said, that... It You're doesn't say that yet. Observing, I'm saying it could be, but, that could be added. That could be yeah. added. Then so I'm fine. I think that's, but that's important because otherwise you have not stated that to have an end-to-end -end secure code build, you expect that if there was a signature in a previous step, it was checked like yeah. this is monitored for so vulnerability. So could we yeah. say yeah. including yeah. signature checks for adding new dependencies? So I could add, we'll add the cursor right now. I could say apply strict vetting processes, including signature checks. Yes, I think it um, should be a must. If there. I were to do that, if I were to do that, uh, the must here uh, means that there are no exceptions, but are realistically all your dependencies always signed? I think if they are not, then you are, I mean, do you, well, your well, risk maybe, to your maybe resulting they, artifact. They were delivered, is... Maybe they were delivered, you know, with an armed guard and, you know, who knows? <laughs> You see what I'm getting at? Uh, like, I, I just want to make sure that we don't, um, you know, dig a hole. I, I do. Um, that's why I think, I mean, it's potentially under that code signing mechanism where there we have the should, right? With this way, you get the exceptions and, and you could say you should sign it. And of course, you should check it, right? If you have no other measurements to to trust it, that way we would have it more under that code signing mechanism rather than the dependency mechanism. Yeah. See, and again, the the, the installation package should be signed, and the reason I said it should be signed is if I, you know, uh, if my build pipeline uh, produces this artifact and goes and updates the attestation service with the measurements of these artifacts then signature is technically not necessary because if, if the package is tampered with attestation, we'll catch it. And this is why there is a should. Uh, now, we discussed previously that you must incorporate depend, like you know strict uh, controls over your supply chain. And uh, I even remember uh, Sal was vocal on this. Uh, and that's why we put it on must because we feel there are no exceptions to, uh, you know, uh, at least making sure that your dependencies are secure. What is not clear is that your dependency checking must incorporate signature checking. Like to my mind, that's actually not a must. We can say, in, in, apply strict vetting processes, including signature checks if available. And then the must can remain and be, you know, equally strict. So if I were to effectively do this, um, I'm going to put myself on suggesting for a second so you can see what I'm doing. Including signature checks, if available, then the must can be, uh, you know, uh, kept in place. 
and it says you yeah you must always check your dependencies if they if signatures are available go go ahead and check them okay yeah that's that's okay i mean regarding the attestation i just think that if this is the implication of a should compared to a mask we should say it that this is the alternative that you're assuming but you don't need to to sign something or check for the signature because you assume a secure way to get yeah. the so the SHA, which is in a way in a signature absence, in the absence of uh uh in the absence alternative of, safeguards as you said like attestation right or uh, having a trustworthy yeah. way to create a SHA and have that documented on the other hand so now again, I can put that in here. Secure core build can say in the absence of uh, uh, signature. Okay, I don't know the signatures uh, being applied to generated compiled artifacts. Uh, one, and I will watch me this later. One must uh, instead secure. One must alternative measures. That way we have securely uh, employ alternative measures such as updating AVS policies with um, the measurement of the generated artifact. Something like that. I don't know. I've I, I just put, put the words down that per perhaps can be made uh, better. Yeah. I think Chris is his hand up. I do, um, and I hate to do this um, at such a late date, but um, I'm wondering if this, the reason we're having, we're struggling with the language here is that we're not eating our, our dog food. Um, and the, the question I have is why, would it be simpler and more straightforward if we actually suggested the application of confidential computing in the build process and used terms like um, attestation, you know, with respect to the compiler and, um, and, and leverage just the basic mechanisms of confidential computing to secure the supply chain. Um, we're, we're sort of dancing around it and not sort of saying how confidential computing contributes to secure build. But I always think back to Ken Thompson's um, absolutely wonderful Turing Award lecture on trusting trust and the things that he talked about um, when he uh, illustrated how hard it is to trust even the compiler. Um, now, we can't solve that problem directly, but if we had a trusted compiler and we made sure that it was that particular compiler that was attested to do the compilation and that um, that T where the compilation is happening signed the um, uh, signed the results, um, and we used that result in subsequent builds. Um, it seems to me like this problem would un unravel itself, and we'd finally make progress on trusting trust. But here in this language, we're not using the terminology of confidential computing. And we're not requiring or suggesting or proposing the, the use of confidential computing as part of the build process. And I feel like that's why we're struggling here. We're trying to solve a problem that can only be solved with confidential computing. Well, and when we strongly isolate compilation processes right here is the language that I believe I inserted to specifically uh, suggest, I guess, uh, I can make it more explicit. Uh, well, but I, I think it, isolation it, is not the key. Is not the key idea. The key idea is authenticated software principles, and um, and you know knowing that it is that particular compiler that was used. Um, so isolation is a nice feature of confidential computing, um, and it helps with protections against malware. But it's not the key idea in secure code. Well, code. that's that the integrity checks part. So again, I, I'm not married to the sentence. I'm perfectly happy to change it. I'm just saying this 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 wasn't completely un you know not thought of. <laughs> uh, it's just that it came out in this way, and uh, I'm perfectly happy to entertain another way of saying it. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to stay away from is a strong statement such you must use uh, confidential computing to you know 
you know, create your compiled artifact. I, I just don't, I don't believe that's a must necessarily, uh, but it could definitely be a should. I, the way I, I, would I agree is... with what uh, Chris was saying, right? I was also struggling that we explicitly mentioned data in transit and data at rest encryption, but not in use, right? And I'm in favor of stating it explicitly. And I also agree that it should be a should at least and may become a must in the future. But I see Alec handing, raising this answer, so for that. Sure, um, so it, it seems like we're struggling with uh, implementations of code integrity and provenance um, protections rather than give a list. And I added this as a comment kind of in text. So if you scroll up just a teeny bit in the comment section, Mark, I think mine might be, have gotten added like above that list there. Yeah, I see it. Yes. You so use... you're saying saying incorporate of mechanisms that protect code provenance and integrity. Right. And then and then have a, for example, code signing, um, golden hash measurements, whatever you want. And that way it because it seems like you 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 said incorporation of code signing, which is a, uh, a means to an end. Or we're, and instead just require the end itself. How like that, right? I, I, I hope it. that maybe that gets us out of the business of having to come up with an exhaustive list of all the ways to do it. Uh, that, that would also subsume bullet number one. Or no? Uh, that's the build process. I See, I see the build process and code signing as completely different steps. I mean, I know of companies that have different divisions that are in charge of that, right? For separation of concerns. So you have um, one division that is in charge of the pipeline and then another division that's in charge of the CA and signing the output of the pipeline if it passes certain um, you know, requirements. So I don't see the two things as being one step, but conceptually they're related. I, I agree with the CA. If you really talk about the secrets to sign, then there's definitely also in our case, a separation. Uh, so I think keeping these practices uh, separated and because you might also have different build pipelines, different tooling there while keeping the same signing mechanism across the different build processes. Uh, so I, I think it's not that it's one item, it should be two. So I, I, I like the way you've kept it separate there. I think we should maintain that separation. So, okay. And also I would say uh, your dependency, uh, like worded like this, the third bullet also it seems to subsume the fifth bullet, right? And this is why I'm saying um, it, it's perhaps better to call things out separately, but again, I'm not married to any of these ideas. I'm just throwing them out. I'm like, I'm perfectly happy to word it. Uh, in a way that makes you know most of us happy, because like I am perhaps like what would we say if we were to start this entire section from scratch? Like what what would you know would we say it in in any uh, significantly different or better way? I have a thought. Um, it would involve two major ideas. The first major idea is. Um, concerns the integrity and authenticity of the compiler and the build tools. And the second major concept is um, to, 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 to uh, Alec, you called it um, provenance, um, but to maintain provenance of the outputs, um, uh, yeah, maintain, maintain provenance of the outputs of the secure build tools. Um, and I guess uh, I would maybe tie that to a third thing, which is that when um, people use the resulted, the, the things that were built, they should also ensure that um, they, should, they should use um, the, uh, the, the measurements of those objects um, uh, or they should check them with the use of attestation in a trusted execution environment or something like it. So three parts, build tools, 
provenance of the build results and um, in in field um, attestation, um, if not confidential computing directly. Okay, so let's um, let's try and perhaps write this down. So, um, if anybody wants to take the pen, that that would be cool too. But uh, I think that this is important to get right. Um, so, what were your three again? Let's let's put them up here and see if we can. Okay, the the first idea is integrity and authenticity of build tools, all build tools. <clears throat> Using, you know, so integrity so integrity words... and authenticity of, of all of, of compiler build, and build tools. Yeah, of the of uh, of the build tools. But would you agree yeah. that it's beyond the build tools? It's also the build environment. That way, we could imply the confidential computing there, as you can have the environment also basically be authenticated that you are in the environment you expect. Uh, sure, yeah, I can add environment. So I just did. Um, I, I, I see, I see what you're trying to do there. But let me just ask, ask the question. <clears throat> um, the requirement is integrity and authenticity, and that implies the need for an environment that has the kinds of properties that we care about. But I'm not sure that the requirement is for. The, well, yeah, okay, fair enough. That's fine. Yep, good point. Okay, so do you wanna so do you want to put things in not bold? Like what goes under maintain integrity and authenticity of the build tools and environment? Why don't we start with the bold stuff and then okay. fill it in? Oh uh, sure. What's the second one? Okay, the second one, um Alec, you had said it well and I can't rep reproduce your words, but it had to do with um uh tracing the provenance, or it had to do with provenance tracing of all of the build outputs. Um, and- uh, I had to do a comment there. Uh, I've got uh, incorporation of mechanisms that protect code provenance and integrity. Okay. Uh, that would include, that would include tracing or uh, what would, what would that, yeah. Okay. Uh, that protect code provenance and integrity. Okay, cool. So that's the third bullet down, whatever. And then now the last bullet is um, something about uh, in-field um, uh, attestation of the of software artifacts that can be traced to the secure build tools we used in the very beginning. Not to interrupt here, but just want to say, I think that bullet is great, but it belongs in section three, secure integration, configuration, and deployment. I totally agree with what Chris is saying. I just, that's not part of the build. That's part of what you do once you receive a package. Uh, I would actually counter that. I would say you produce the package first. You, you generate like artifacts. Uh, that's where your build stops. And then integration okay. is you got the build, the, the package off of the build environment, out of the build environment. Now you're putting it somewhere. You're integrating it with some configuration. You're deploying it somewhere. Maybe I misunderstood Chris. What Chris, were you talking about att attestation of build tools or were you talking about attestation of the packages before execution at deployment time? The, the third bullet is about the at deployment time, the first bullet is about the build tools. The second, second is about, um, you know, the the chain of uh, some uh, the the build chain. Like you have a bunch of um, libraries that need to be assembled together, and each of those libraries needs to be checked. And the provenance, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's applying um, uh, attestation. Or, or it's it's applying um, measurement and attestation to the intermediate products of the build, and then the third thing is just about you know all right I've got the binary, um, is it the binary that was produced by my secure build environment and tools um, or not? I think I understood you correctly, and I think we're saying the same thing. I'm just saying if you go down to the bottom of the screen there that Mark has up shared where it says secure integration configuration and deployment, 
Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. So this whole this whole this whole section is just about the build. This is just the build. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I think we're good now. I, I think your point was ex excellently made. Um, it just goes in that other section if it's not already covered in there. Yeah. yeah okay. Great. Yep. So now, so I guess the question then is: Do are the first bullets, first two bullets that we were just imagined, do they cover everything that the fourth, the other, the original five bullets were trying to cover or not? Because I think reproducibility falls out naturally. You don't need that anymore. Secure dependency management has to do with um, the provenance of the intermediate objects. And then the uh, code signing mechanisms are part of the environment. Um, yep, I think, I think the original section was pretty well covered. Um, that last bullet that you mentioned, I can't see down below the in secure integration, see if it mentions attestation or signature checking, which is what um, Well, so this is the AVS hygiene. So basically the AVS policies must match the most recent versions of deployed payloads. Uh, we talked about configuration hygiene, uh, which is a catch-all after the more important uh, trusted root store, cryptography, and, and cryptographic key, right? So you want to make sure that you're choosing the right ciphers and modes, that you have the right root stores, and that you have the, that you manage your keys correctly. Those are three that, are, you know, fairly non-controversial. Uh, and then AVS is separate. Like you need to make sure as part of configuration deployment that your AVS is, uh, uh, you know, serving up the right policies. Um, I think the only thing I would say is to fully incorporate Chris's statement in the third bullet point down there, you have security sensitive configuration hygiene. Um, you, you, ex you call out configuration there, but I think Chris was making a point that you also have to validate signatures on binaries and packages and so forth, in addition to the configuration artifacts. So, uh, you know, I don't know. We're splitting hairs a little bit, but um, I think that's the one point that Chris called out that maybe isn't expressly. <coughs> so, we're jumping back and forth. Um, I, I have one question regarding in the third bullet, you just mentioned the if you could a must on remote attestation. Sorry? Did you say? I don't know whether we were talking out, continue to talk about two or three. You were just down on three, and I had a comment on that one. Or do we first want to close two? Uh, uh, I, I would like to close two, if possible. I just focus on uh, everything involved in creating the, the like a secure, effectively secure build of your code. And then we'll talk about uh, everything happens after. OK, so but I thought this is like the, I understood the first three bullets, which we have with secure and isolated, secure compile, incorporating signing. These are more detailed things of the first bullet Chris provided. And the last two were of the of the second bullet at the top now. I, I thought that that makes sense to me, right? You have that line and then the two must shoulds after that, right? I totally agree with that. I think the, the first bullet is really a chapter heading. And then the ones under the green line are basically paragraphs within that chapter. And maybe the the under the green line stand on their own. Maybe they don't need a chapter heading for sake of brevity. <clears throat> so when you talk about establish, maintain integrity and authenticity of the build tools and environment, that sounds a lot like secure and isolated build practices. The build process should incorporate integrity checks and strongly isolated Compilation process. Yeah, we can put all of that down. We can put sub bullets on this. So we can say running like not important. Just copy, just copy and paste the two bullets that you've already got down there below the green line. Uh this and that. Yeah. 
you're saying put it here. Yeah. Okay, great. I think that's good. And then uh then then the but Good. this, by the way, this still doesn't mention trust execution environments. Uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, this is, I, I, there I think we could rename it, right? I strongly isolate it and incorporate it in tech to tech. I, I think we should mention data and use protection. Um, if possible, uh, utilize trusted execution environments uh, to run all protect data and use build tools to... you can reword that to say um the build pipeline should use trusted execution environments to run all build tools if possible okay. the build you don't need if possible that's what i'm saying the build pipeline should that would keep it in line the build pipeline should utilize t's to run all uh, all of its components, something like that. Or just say the build pipeline should utilize T's, that's it. Oh, no, I think the mentioning of all components is good, right? That way okay. you, you apply okay. that. Also, you could argue who has access, like the EIM system for your build pipeline yeah, should yeah, also yeah, yeah, leverage yeah. T's. And, and that way you go beyond the actual build component thing. Okay. So, so a question, why are we using um, language that isn't, let's see, could we, could, let me say, could we use language that is already defined as part of confidential computing? So in particular, the build process should incorporate attestation period. Um, instead of integrity checks, because integrity checks, you know, yeah, you need integrity and you need authenticity. And to me, that's what um, attestation gives you. Uh, so it's just you... that not everyone, so not everyone may have the capability to utilize uh, trust execution environments in their build chain, or maybe not right away. But so they should we... still strive for authentic authenticity and integrity. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm saying utilize T's as a should. And if you don't, uh, you know, it's kind of. Quite frankly, attestation is is sometimes, yeah, it, it is one way to do it, right? Uh, we also do a, a lot with, with encryption and zero knowledge proofs, right? Um, that's why I would don't think that, that we should have only attestation there because there are other ways to check for integrity and, and these aspects, right? Okay, but I, I think the authenticity is the part that I'm missing here. Um, and so to me, attestation includes both integrity and autist. And uh, it, maybe there are other methods, but um, can we mention authenticity then instead of just integrity? Uh, we, we say integrity and authenticity right here. Okay, but not in the build, the build process should incorporate integrity checks and strongly isolated processes. Why doesn't that? say um, integrity checks, authenticity checks, or integrity and authenticity or something like that. What authenticity is seems really important to me. What's the difference between integrity and authenticity? Um, well, you can have something which has not been tampered with, but it's not the right thing. Some other program. OK, I got you. I understand. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I, I would say instead of in the, the only other thing, is the build pipeline should utilize confidential computing, perhaps not T, because confidential computing is also remote attestation. Yeah, or data in use, right? In the previous chapter, you were referring to data in, in transit and data in rest, so it should be. Well, confidential computing, I would also say, like properly done, will also ensure the uh, you know, security of data in transit. Certainly, in in the places where it you know it runs, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> uh, it's kind of it's it's like recursive, right? We talk about here. Effectively, in this case, your build pipeline is your confidential payload. Thank you.
Okay, can we then move to the second? I, I think this one we've beaten to death. It, it does things again. Feel free, feel free later to propose other changes, but in the interest of time, we have 13 minutes left. I would like to move um, to the next one. So when we say incorporate mechanism to protect code provenance and integrity. Um, I think the first sub bullet should start with generated binaries and configuration settings, and then the other two. So, um, I can put that in here. Uh, I don't know if I like the phrase delivered in ancillary files and installation package. Should we say um, generated binaries? Uh, can we just remove that? Yeah, I think that's fine. I got burned by that, so I was being carefully careful when I worded it. Configuration file that was in a package. Obviously, it was a text file, so it couldn't be signed, and somebody uh, took advantage. Red team okay, So that's done. Uh, <laughs> mechanism to protect code province and integrity. Is there anything else that we need to put another sub bullet here? Uh, the next one's down, right? I mean, you can just leave it as as is, right? Reproducible builds, uh, uh, secure dependency management, all those things that you already had before. Yeah. I think those are nice sub bullets that just need to be indented. We already moved that. And yeah. then the reproducible build secure yeah. dependency management. So if I were to accept these changes, we're good, right? Yep. How do I accept the change? Okay, I guess I do that. I do that. That's it, right? Except, so we're done with this section now. I think you can indent reproducible builds and secure dependency management. Isn't that part of protecting code provenance and integrity? Well, reproducible builds probably stands on its own. You can do all the things above, but then, uh, like Sal mentioned, you timestamp something on every build, and all of a sudden your build looks different every single time. Yeah. Uh, that's, What's an uh, example? I'm sorry, I was trying to. So, if you're trying to create a reproducible build, if the re if the binary is generated differently every time because you sign some sort of a timestamp, you'll never have the same build twice. And that way, you will also fail the attestation, right? Because if you yeah. try to to reproduce it to validate an attestation, you will always get you will never get again the same shot, right? Right. Which is right. This issue. is this is where. Uh, this is where the uh, that's why there is a comment on the reproducible. So if we click on this one, uh, we're talking like I was actually that was a question to Sal. Uh, yeah, what are we going to what are we going to talk about fragility factors, reproducible builds? Like again, we can we can uh, reference an external document here. So somebody who wants to read about you know the, the challenges of reproducible builds that's not computational computing specific. But I, I'm leaving this uh, comment open for you, Sal, to you know put, put some sort of reference on it. Yeah, I'll find a, I'll find a, there's got to be a very, I mean, for scientific computing, I'm sure we've got a clear pattern. Yeah. On and dependency management, I feel has nothing to do with integrity of the build chain uh, of the tool, like tools, whatever, or compiler settings. It's really its own thing. Like if you have dependencies, then you want to make sure that, you know, that you're using the right dependencies. Uh, but again, not married to that idea can move it into something else. I'd be fine with decreasing the indent and just make it part of the numbered list. I think that's a good idea because that gets to the whole SBOM executive order thing. You want this uh, just, as a top level next to secure code build? Yeah, I think shift tab. Go down there, shift tab, done. But it's is is it not part of secure code build? I think you were saying that it's kind of not right. This is all about running black. No, I'm saying like I'm saying it should not be a sub bullet of any of the bullets here. That's what I was saying. Not that it should be a, a top level concern. But I think it is a top level concern because if I have one artifact securely built. I still need to have something in place for also the dependency of love that secure build being being somehow vetted. So I, I think uh, Alex's proposal to move it up 
Secure dependency management is something which goes beyond secure code. You could argue that even after deployment, you still need to observe continuously that you have not identified a new vulnerability, which wasn't there when you build it or was not known when you build it. And, and this triggers stuff, right? So, so I just moved it to both three. Are we happy? Yep. So we have now we have secure code development, we have secure code build, and we have secure dependency management. Yeah. In fact, I would maybe move it before, like you know, first you got your code, then you got your development, and then you got your build. Oh, like so you, well, you could argue that, as I said, it's how you see it, right? If you see the secure dependency management with vulnerability, something which you also do in your deployed environment to address new findings, then it would be actually fine. It depends how you prioritize it. Mm. Okay. Well, then I just the okay. way Mark described it, which is you know you 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 set up your pipeline. Now you've got your dependencies. You make sure that the log four J version that you're using is the right one. Then you do your build. Right. That's what I was saying. This is why I would move it be uh, above two. Fine with me. Don't care. So that one is done. Okay, so now we got in the logical flow, secure code development, already figured that, secure dependency management, secure code build, uh, secure integration configuration and deployment. So let's go over this and then uh, we'll probably be done for today. We will not have time to get into the control objective uh, explicit write-up, but I will do that by at the time we meet next. Uh, it's also parallel something I'm doing at work. So it's like almost no extra work for me. So my main concern is with bullet four. Okay, let's talk about it. Because with that, we prerequisite remote attestation processes, which I think is there are alternative approaches, um, as you know, where you don't have a remote attestation, but you use encryption, for instance, to have secrets being injected. And because you know, or you have a zero knowledge proof on the other side, you can have sensitive configuration being being added under your, the fourth bullet, security sensitive configuration hygiene. I don't see why oh, this, this is the must, one be, that... must be a remote attestation process. You don't believe that? I don't believe it. We, I mean, our systems has keys and public certificates present. So you can send configurations to our systems where you don't need a remote attestation to know that they were securely put there. I see. How, how do you do that again? Well, the, the system itself has a, a published public key against which you can encrypt. And then this basically the system itself is the only one in the world who can decrypt it. Okay, so it's just so it's going mm -hmm. going the other way around, then having a system, getting a public key, then attestating whether this is right, and then starting to inject your secrets. In manufacturing, in our case, uh, we basically give the system an identity against which you can then um encrypt. You can still do attestation after this of the software stack. I'm not challenging that. But move, having sensitive configuration being being sent to a system to basically determine what to deploy, which workload chart to check, which signature you expect is something where you don't, where in my opinion you don't need remote attestation because the argument would be how do I now trust the remote attestation process without doing the very same thing in the first place, and then you have that chicken egg issue again. Right? Can we use the same technique we used above, which is? describe what we're trying to accomplish it sounds like similar right guarantee integrity and provenance of configuration what do you got of security sensitive configuration artifacts something like that and i would actually add as we had talking about the cryptographic kitchen here also confidentiality of configurations because some of your api keys and such which you get from your kms system in the second place with remote attestation is actually to then establish a confidential uh, channel between your 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 um, deployment and your other source of data or access, right? So I think 
this one would be something where we should mention that for me, the key thing is is also confidentiality or established confidentiality as you proceed. Otherwise, you wouldn't need cryptographic hydrogen. Right. Um, yeah, I, I see that. But like what Mark has there is the very first one, trusted roots for hygiene. I mean, you don't need confidentiality there. You just need integrity. So I think for some things, confidentiality is required. For other things, it's not. So requiring it for everything. I think is I'm not I'm not saying that it's a must. I was just I mean, as we were before saying with confidential computing, you for instance have the data in flight uh protection. For that, you need some kind of confidential way to get that TLS certificate into your 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 enclave. For that, you need that root store hygiene. And and so you need at one point transfer something securely from your KMS or whatever to your enclave to start and proceed. And that's why I, why I said, so I, 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 it doesn't need to be a must that everything is confidential, but um, if you are talking about sensitive configuration, I think it is, right? So um, this is what I had in mind when I wrote that. Um, so we already talked about, you know, keys, uh, you know, crypto and trust root stores. So that's like, let's, let's just like, that's, that's probably good enough. Uh, I just remember that there are things that you can supply to say containers when they start up. And the, um, the thing that you encounter is. Uh, these things, uh, you know, get mounted on some sort of a clear text volume and then the container goes, picks it up or whatever. And whoever controls that if can effectively control the security of the container that uh, launches. And this is one example. So that's why I was like, uh, I wanted to catch all for all other, like other than crypto, uh, all other security sensitive configuration that might be there. Just make sure it's securely delivered. And that's why I said it should be attested. Now, I, again, I'm not married to this. I, I, yeah, I threw it out as a proposal. I'm more than happy to reward if, if there is a better way of saying it. I, yeah, I, I mean, I think we have the same thing. It is about we need to have, uh, we, we, we have things which are sensitive from a security perspective. Uh, as you said, mounted configuration, it might be the policy you enforce against your container. This is part of the confidential container efforts. It might be your API token to get to the KMS or the record to get the KMS, uh, the attestation record or your MTLS certificate. So yeah. it's always that in the end of the day, you want the enclave to have, in my opinion, uh, an identity or authentication or integrity or encryption capability. And this is all the other ones are things to basically do this down the line, right? Okay. So I think the fourth bullet is the, the North Star, but it shouldn't be always remove attestation because I think there are other okay. processes as I alluded so, to. So since we're running out of time, Nicholas, can I ask you to suggest wording in there and we'll revisit next time we meet. Okay, sounds good. And I will I will uh, write the uh, precise control objectives that result. So the solution is all of these things. And then I wanna see uh, under the personas, maybe that's a different uh, like title I need to give to the section, but I want to write sample control procedures for people to follow when setting up the you know control objective of secure payload governance. Okay, and I will propose what that wording might be. We'll talk about it next time. Just if you want to steal some words, right? I mean, we have a, 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 a paper and write book out there where we, from our perspective, yeah. outlet some of the personas we match. So you could, we could, okay. we could copy. Unfortunately, I just have to, um, I, I have to go jump into another meeting right now. Uh, so I have to drop. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, m m please go ahead and edit this doc. Everybody has access, uh, in two weeks we'll revisit and hopefully then we'll close it. But I think we made great progress today. Just one question. I mean, I joined today because actually last week we were supposed to present something and Draco Belli couldn't make it today. So I was just wondering whether my advertising in the last recording didn't resonate, so we just skipped the, the topic, or is that something to be done in two weeks or four weeks, just to let me know? Uh, let's do it in two weeks. Okay, I've... I will check with Andrea Copelli that, that he's available. I just wanted to. Uh, when, uh, whenever you can, we'll, 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 make okay. a, uh, we'll make a presentation priority next time.
And and I wasn't here last time, Nicholas, and I'm the note taker, so I apologize. I, I would have been on that. So I'll make sure that I record it in the notes. Can you share with me, if, if you don't mind in chat, share with me the, um, the gentleman's name, your name, and uh, the topic, and I'll make sure I put it in the minutes as an action note. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, apolog I apologize. We have miscommunicated. Yep. I like the discussion. I otherwise I should have told that in the 59th minute rather than in my first minute. So I'm fine. <laughs> well, yeah. Welcome right. to the GRC. I, uh, hey, I mean for the second time, but uh, yeah, I was I was glad that you jumped in because it was super helpful. I'm yeah. also jumping off in another call, but next uh, next time I think if we socialize it, make sure everyone's aware, everyone's back from RSA and also coming back from. COVID from RSA, so they should be on next time. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Take care. Yeah. You mentioned the presenter's name. I didn't quite get that. Ah, there we go. And also, if you've got uh, your email, I'll go ahead and include it in the minutes. So we have a way to reach you should stuff mess up. Got it. Thanks, Nicholas. And so just to recap, and I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Um, just to recap, uh, Andrea is going to present at the next meeting uh, on that topic, Navigating Compliance. We were jointly. So so this was an OC3 presentation. And at the end, uh, people ask us to also come to the GRC and, and socialize it there a little bit, some of the aspects which are already raised. Got and it. So you're going to present it. We are both presenting. And uh, I mean, and, and so we are both presenting. And I just need I, to make sure that he's also there. Today, he couldn't make it. But so I just joined in case you would have said, no, we are all here, 25 people. Then I would have done it alone, but otherwise I prefer to have it with them. So awesome, awesome, cool. And again, you know, normally these meetings are a little bit uh, more formal. It's just uh, things have been a little crazy since RSA. So I appreciate your patience. That's fine. Okay. All right. See you next week. See you. Bye.